Well, good evening. Welcome back to Calvary Baptist Church to uh, our message this evening, and we appreciate you tuning in. Um, as far as, once again, I uh, don't want to drag out very long, but uh, just some, some announcements we've been making uh, just to make you aware of. Don't forget, next Sunday now, Easter Sunday, um, we will be having a combined service at Tidewater Baptist Church uh, in uh, Chesapeake on Campostella Road. Uh, we're going to have a drive-in service, and so I hope that you'll be able to make that. Uh, you will not uh, have to get out of your vehicle. Uh, you'll pull in. We'll park you. A parking attendant will show you where to park. Uh, you'll stay in your car. And um, once again, we're going to try two different ways. Hopefully, the FM transmitter will work uh, to where you can tune your radio station to it. We'll give you the frequency of the station we need you to tune to. Uh, if not, we'll have large speakers set out. And the service will last probably about an hour. We're going to have some special singing and, of course, a message as well. Uh, the uh, restrooms will be available uh, in the end part of the building there at Tidewater. And so they will also they'll have someone at the door. Uh, we don't want, you know, too many folks going in at one time trying to keep the social distancing. And uh, so we'll but you will be able to use a restroom if that's necessary. And like I said, once you pull in the actual service itself, uh, will last about about an hour. And so if you would, we, we're going to ask, of course, that you stay in your cars. We don't want you to get out fellowshipping, shaking hands, and hugging and all that. We want to we do all we can. Uh, we know, of course, this is uh, through the, the authorities. They, they don't have a problem with churches doing this. Uh, once again, as long as we kind of keep the social distance. And, and we do want to do our part to keep this virus from spreading. Uh, also, let me just say continue to pray for our nation. Pray, uh, of course, through this. Uh, God will, uh, uh, of course, heal our land. And we, we need more of a spiritual healing than we do a physical. <clears throat> but we do ask God to heal us as well from this virus and that God will use it for his glory and for his honor. Also, we'll be, <clears throat> I'm going to, going to be trying Tuesday night, if I can get it worked out, uh, uh, and if you have an email address, and I have your cell phone as well, uh, we're going to try to have a, um, a conference meeting uh, on, uh, online uh, to where you'll be able to, uh, you'll actually be able to see, we'll be able to see each other's face and, um, and greet one another. We'll be able to hear each other. So I'm going to try this. I want to do this for our prayer time that we can all come together Tuesday night at 7 o'clock and pray. And then Wednesday night, Lord willing, we will be recording, uh, once again, a message for Wednesday night and uh, having that ready for you for a Bible study this coming Wednesday as well. Uh, listen, if you, need to, if you need to call me, please do so. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, I, I know I've, I've, we've checked in, of course, on our shut-ins, uh, and we're keeping, of course, an eye on them as well. And, but uh, please call one another. I know we need to first be praying one for another, but call one another. Uh, and also, uh, I'd love to hear from you. If you have a chance uh, uh, to call, I'd love to hear from you as well. And uh, once again, just encourage each other. Other than that, I believe that's all I have at this time. So at this moment, we're going to have Tim and Rebecca sing a special. And after they've sang a special, uh, I'll then come and present the uh, message. So Tim and Rebecca is going to sing it this time. Secret 
Take your Bibles and turn to the book of James, chapter 5. Uh, this evening, the uh, title of my message is Be Patient. Uh, James, chapter 5, and I'd like to read verses 7 through 12. James, chapter 5, verse 7 through 12. And I hope that you, uh, hope you have your Bible with you. Uh, follow along with me. If not, if you at least uh, just listen then as I read James chapter 5, beginning to read at verse 7, we'll through, read through verse 12. The Bible says, Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he receive the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Take, my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord, for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy." But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath, but let your nay be your be nay, and let your let your yea be yea, and your nay nay, lest you fall into condemnation. Let's pray. Father, once again, we thank you for this opportunity that we have, Lord, through this method and technology, Lord, to bring your word. And Lord, I do pray once again, Father, just speak to our hearts tonight. Lord, would you please, Lord, just uh, meet with us. Lord, just open up our, our eyes, our ears to your truth. And Father, once again, as always, I, I need your help desperately. I pray tonight, Lord, that Lord, you'd please fill and anoint me with the power of the Holy Spirit. Please give me the words, give me the thoughts. And Father, I pray through this message, Lord, that if there's anyone listening that does not know Christ as Savior, I do pray that, Lord, this moment would be the moment to their salvation. And Lord, I pray for each one of us that do know you as Savior, that, Lord, you'd use this moment to draw us closer to thee. And we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
You know, as we start here in the book of James, these believers here, they're enduring, of course, some suffering. Many of them at this point, uh, they had, of course, been given up hope. They had been discouraged. They had been disappointed. Uh, the early church, of course, early churches. And at this point, of course, they were they were going through a, a lot. And in fact, we see, if it, we're not going to go back there, but if you go back to the very beginning of the book of James and his letter of chapter 1, he mentions uh, patience, and then we come to this place where he addresses it again. And the, the Lord's trying to teach us here that you and I, we, we have to be very faithful with, in our patience. We've got to re, remain patient. We have to remain faithful. And not only doing that, but also expecting the return of Jesus Christ. And, you know, when we talk about the return of Jesus Christ, uh, no man knoweth the day nor the hour that that will happen. And it, it could come before this, uh, before this service is over. It could come before the morning. But whether or not it's where it's at or how soon, the Bible tells us that you and I, we're to, we are to be ready. We're, we're to expect it. We should be uh, awake and alert and, and until then, uh, being faithful and serving the Lord. And, and, you know, when Jesus Christ does come, you can be assured of this. He will, wrong, he will right all wrongs. Listen, when Christ comes and takes the church out, and then when he comes after the seven-year tribulation period back to this earth, the Bible says he will rule with a rod of iron. You can be assured that, uh, that he will right all wrongs. And, you know, I know, I know many times we just, uh, we, we get maybe aggravated, uh, maybe with the way things are going, uh, the direction of maybe our nation or maybe in our, our, own, uh, our own city, our own lives. Uh, and sometimes we just say, Lord, you know, as, as the Bible says, Lord, come quickly. And you can be assured the Lord is coming back. And we need to be expecting that. We need to look forward to that. And there's three times in verses 7, 8, and 9 that uh, we are reminded of the coming of the Lord. And this, the, this, of course, is called the blessed hope in the book of Titus. In fact, Titus 2.13 says, Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. That blessed hope. This is a guaranteed hope. This is a promised hope. It's not... Is it going to happen or not? No, it is going to happen. The Bible says that this hope that we have in Christ, this guaranteed hope, he said it is a blessed hope. And our present life, though, of course, is not easy. It's not comfortable. The Lord never says it, said it would be. In fact, in John 16, 33, it says, In the world you shall have, tribula you shall have tribulation. And you and I, we need to learn to be patient to endure the hardships and the heartaches that come with that until Christ does return. And I know right now, of course, uh, this crisis, I guess, has got uh, everyone's attention. Well, it does. I mean, it's got everyone's attention, not just in our nation, but around the world. This is a, uh, this is a, a virus that has literally attacked the, the entire world. Uh, many, of course, has died from it. Uh, there's a lot about it that they... Uh, they're, they're trying to learn much about it. There's a lot about it they still don't know. It's, it's spreading quicker than, than they thought. Uh, I, I mean, there's, there's so much to, to answer about this and, 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 and our answers to it. And then we have, on top of it, I mean, you know, United States of America, the economy. Our economy is, is, is really struggling very bad right now. And, and, and if it keeps up, our economy is, I mean, it's, it's really going to be tough and I don't know how long that the comeback will be, but I do know this. Through it all, the children of God, we have nothing to fret or worry over. We truly don't. We can have patience through this, through this great suffering that we're going through, through this great trial. And the Lord, he teaches us that when, when we go through hardships, that we need to endure these things. We need to be very patient through hardships and heartaches. And we need to do this, of course, until Christ returns. Now, in this passage of Scripture, there's two different meanings to the word patience in these verses. In verse 7, 8, and 10, the word patient means long-tempered or long-suffering. This, of course, is in reference to the, uh, to the persons themselves that we are to be long-suffering. In verse 11, uh, we have here, in fact, if you want to look at verse 11, Behold, we count them happy which endure. 
You have heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and tender mercy. That word endure and the word patient both means remain under. In other words, this speaks of, of great stress. Patience here means to stay put and stand fast when you would like to run away. And you know, a lot of times when we face, um, when we face hardships, uh, when we face great trials and great tribulations. The Lord teaches us that, listen, we as his children, we need to learn to be patient. One reason we can be patient is because we know that the Lord is in control. We can trust him. But another one too, a lot of times we try, uh, our first initial thought is, how can I get out of it? Listen, the next time you're faced with a great trial and some more, I, I mean, some right now, you're going through a, a trial of your own personal selves as well as this, this great trial or testing that our nation is going through. You're going through a, maybe a personal trial yourself or a tribulation or a hardship or a heartache at this moment. And, you know, the first thing we'd like to do is, is say, man, I just, I just, I wish I could just get away from it all. I wish I could run away. I wish I could just put it behind me. But what the Lord is trying to teach us is to endure through it. Instead of praying and asking the Lord to remove it, is ask God to help us with the endurance we need and the patience we need to get through it. Because listen, no matter, no matter how bad that you want the, the trial or testing and tribulation in your life to be over, until the Lord allows it to be over, you have to go through it. And listen, you cannot run away from it. I'll never forget years ago, Sherry and I, we were going through, of course, a, a great trial and tribulation in the economy uh, back in the early 90s. Of course, it, it, uh, you know, it kind of took a southward turn and wasn't doing good. And, and uh, man, businesses were closing up and our business uh, that I had at the time, the electrical business was, you know, we had decided we was going to have to close it. And, and, and I was trying, I was seeking what the Lord would have me to do and, there was a uh, job opportunity that came up to, and, and, and it would it would have allowed me. I say a job opportunity. It it did come up, but but I mean, even though I tried uh, to get the position, uh, the Lord said no to it. It would have allowed me to move either to South Carolina or Georgia uh, for this position. And I, I'll be honest with you, I wanted it very badly. And uh, I'm not so sure how Sherry felt about it, but I wanted it badly. But this is why. I didn't want it badly because I was, you know, I felt that was the Lord's will for me to do. I didn't want it badly because I was, um, you know, I wanted to hurry up and, and get a job so I could start providing for my family again. I wanted it badly because I felt if I could get away and, and get down there and run, kind of run away from my problem, that my problem would go away. But it's not. You know, even though, you, you listen, you could go from here to the other side of the world. But guess what? That problem's still here. The problem still, I mean, we, we, we still carry it with us. And so it, it does us no good to run away from our, our trials or tribulations or testings or heartaches or headaches. It does us no good. What we need is to trust the Lord through it. And that makes all the difference in the world. Because we can either learn to endure with patience and, and go through the trial and testing with a peace, inward peace, and, but, or, or we can fret and worry about it and try to run away from it. And listen, it's, it's much better to trust the Lord through it. Endurance means patience with respect to, of course, the conditions or the situation of the time. You and I, we must be patient through the, the, the mental and emotional stress and and patient with the circumstance or the situation itself. We need to we need to endure both. And a lot of times, uh, a lot of times, the mental stress can can really get to you. Um, and I know uh, I know many times that you know it it can affect us. It it can affect affect every one of us. And that's why once again we need we need to learn to to endure, to trust, to have patience in the Lord, and wait. Of course, in Christ. Not just be patient and wait. There's a difference in waiting and waiting in Christ. Depending on him, trusting him to get you through. And so 
you and I, we, we can't run from our problems as much as you try or want to. You, you know, a lot of times couples will do that. You know, they'll, they'll run into some issues or problems. And it seems like the best thing to do is just, let's just divorce, let's just separate, and let's just go our separate ways. And that can even, in some marriages, that can even create more of a problem. It's Listen, running away is not the answer. We need to turn to Christ and learn to trust him and endure through it and have patience and wait for the Lord to give us the answer and to get us through it. We have to be patient. We have to, and, and not only during that time, what the Lord's trying to teach us here is during that time is we need to stand firm while we're going through it. We need to be faith. We need, listen, we've got to remain faithful to the Lord. When <clears throat> I've watched so many people when they're going through a testing or great trial or tribulation, I've watched one of the worst things they do is they get away from God. You're getting away from the one that can help you. Do not get away from the Lord. If anything, through our heartache, our heartbreaks, our trials, our testings, our tribulations, we need to be drawing closer to the Lord, not getting away from him because he's our answer. He is the one that we need, of course, to, 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 to rely on, to trust in. He's the one that will give us the strength to stand firm. He's the one that will provide the peace that passeth all understanding through it, the joy that's unspeakable and full of glory. He's the one that will allow us to endure to the end. And so the worst thing we can do, but I see it happen many times of, of Christians and believers, as soon as they're faced with a trial or trust testing or tribulation, they start getting away from the Lord. They start getting away from God's people. Listen, there's, there's, there's only so much that a pastor can say or do for you. There's only so much that brothers and sisters in Christ can say or do for you. But God can, listen, the Lord is the one, though, he can be there for you at all times and never leave you nor forsake you. I can't help you but so much. Our brothers and sisters can't help us so much. But let me say this. The help that they can be to us, God allows that to be a blessing that at, that at that moment, what they can do for us is pray. The greatest thing on the face of this earth is God gives us the power of prayer that we can pray one for another. And so the last thing you want to do too is abandon your brothers and sisters in Christ. A lot of times when there's a, a issue, and I've seen this as a pastor now for over 23 years, a lot of times you see a problem issue come up with someone. Maybe they have a problem with me or they have a problem with someone else in the church. And you know what they decide to do? They decide just to leave. And, 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 and they decide to leave and the problem's still there. And listen, that just running away from problems many times can create more of a problem. Running away from a problem and getting far away from it, that is not the solution. We need the Lord to give us the, the answer and the solution to the problems. And so many times I'll see folks, and you know, they'll just, they'll just leave the church. And really they have no good excuse. And, and it's not the best thing for them at all. But, but the Lord, he wants us to stand firm. We have to trust God and, and, and to bring it. Uh, the Lord, Listen, the Lord will bring it to a close. He will bring it to an end at his timing. You know, Darren, uh, as I listen to... And, and, and listen, I'm just telling you personally, myself, I'll be honest with you, I do not listen to a whole lot of news on this um, because I don't, I don't know if I could. You know, I don't know how long some people, I don't know how long they're spending listening to the news about this, this virus and all. I'm not sticking my head in the sand. I'm listening to what I feel. I'm listening to enough to stay updated on it, but I'm also not letting, I'm just not letting it consume me either because... Um, you know, it, I, I believe we have to be very careful of that. But what I was going to say, <clears throat> I've learned many say this phrase, this too shall pass. I've heard a lot of people on the news say that, whether it be a doctor, whether, you know, whether it be the president, vice president, whether it be, uh, you know, some government officials, whoever it might be, they say, you know, we'll, we'll get through this. This too shall pass. I, I wonder sometimes when I hear that, and I'm glad to hear it because it's 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 a biblical uh, verse. It, it it is it's scripture. This too shall pass. That's biblical wording. I wonder though how many that might say it. There might be some. They're Christians, and that's why they're saying it. 
It could be some, they've just heard that phrase. Some might not even know where the phrase comes from that it is biblical. But just because the world, even if they use it, it still don't take away from the fact that that is the Lord's biblical wording. This too shall pass. And with this virus, this too shall pass. And so we need to learn to trust God till the, uh, to the end, to endure to the end. But the ending will come in his timing. You and I, when we are faced with trials and testings, you are not going to speed up the ending to get there. You're not going to speed it up. It will end when God brings it to an end. But the Lord allows us to endure to the end. That's, that's a big difference. We can either stay miserable to the end, and we can stay fretful, and we can stay worried, or we can try to run the whole time from the problem. Running's not going to end it. Or we can endure and trust God to the end when he brings it to pass. Uh, I guess one of the main questions in James here as we read this is how can we as, as believers, how can we as Christians experience this kind of patience and endurance as we, of course, wait for the Lord's return? So until he returns, how, how can we do this? Well, God, he gives us in this passage of scripture, he gives us three very encouraging uh, 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 examples of, of, of being patient and our enduring to the end. In verses 7 through 9, he uses, of course, the, the example of a farmer. In verses 10, he uses the example of the prophets. And in verse 11, he uses the example of Job. Now, once again, these examples are to be to us encouraging, and it, and it should be encouraging to us. I want to I wanna look at these, and <clears throat> I don't know if my time will allow me to get all three of them uh, here this evening, but, but we'll, we'll just go as far as we can. But verses 7 through 9, here in James chapter 5, it says in verse 7 through 9 again, Be patient, therefore, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he receive the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Now, you know, there is there is much to say in that. There's many, many, seriously, passages or messages in these three verses. But we're just going to look at some tonight. First of all, I want to say this. I want to kind of jump ahead just a little bit. In verse 9, a lot of times when we get under stress, uh, we get under the stress and worry of a trial or testing a tribulation. If we're not careful, careful, we can do according to verse nine, and we can start grudging, grudge not, or complain not against one another. We can start complaining. Listen, this is the last thing we need to do. Stress can bring conflict between a you know husband and wife, uh, between parents and children. Uh, it can bring it between you know uh, employee and a boss. It can. It can bring between a pastor and members. It can bring it between member and uh, against member. And the last thing we, listen, complaining is not going to help, once again, in the situation. It's not going to help make the uh, testing or the trial uh, that we're facing at the time, it's not going to make it go by any quicker, and it's not going to help through it by us complaining about it, by by starting to complain and grudge and, and, and starting discord and strife, sometimes within a family, you know, you have two members that maybe two, two of the members of the family, they, they maybe have a disagreement and, you know, they it's kind of a family feud. And what happens a lot of times if, if them two would just come together and, and even if they need someone as a mediator between them to give them some godly wisdom, and just make things right and just end it and confess where you're wrong at and forgive one another. A lot of times what they start doing is they start trying to get people on their side. They start now complaining to more people. And now you're created more of a problem. You take a, a church, whatever size it is, whatever your size, you know, 100 members, 1,000 members, 2,000, whatever size you are. All it takes is for one 
to get started to cause a split in the church. And that one goes with somebody else. And then they go to somebody. And next you know, they, you know, back and forth, back and forth. Listen, it does us no, it's not going to help your problem one bit or your stress to start, you know, to, to start uh, complaining about it, being in a foul mood, snapping at people. And, and that goes both ways. If you know, if you know your spouse, if you know maybe they're they're under stress at work or something, and, and they come home, maybe they do snap at you. First of all, the person coming home, you know, you shouldn't come home being, you know, grouchy toward the, the person that you love and snapping at them. But even if they do, we we that have been snapped at, we you need to be forgiving. Understand that they're under this stress. And that, you know, it's it's just, now I'm not saying that it's, that is not an excuse for someone to, to not act like Christ and be like Christ. But what I'm saying is we need to be forgiving towards people sometimes like that. I used to be, uh, years ago, I mean, if I went into a store or something and the person behind a counter had an attitude, sometimes I'd make a smart comment to them about it. And I finally realized one day, it, once again, as the Holy Spirit uh uh, convicted me as the word of God convicted me. I don't know what that person's been through. It could be that's their attitude. And if that's their attitude, my one little smart comment's not going to help the situation at all. It sure ain't going to straighten them out. But also, you don't know what that person's been through. Maybe that person, maybe they just buried their parent. Maybe they just buried a child. Maybe they're going through a divorce. I mean, maybe they just... Uh, maybe they just lost their home. I, you, I'm just saying, maybe they have an illness you don't know about. And I, I come to learn, you know what, whatever their attitude is, I'm going to be kind to them and try to be like Christ to them and give them an encouraging word. They might need, instead of the, you know every person lying, getting nasty back at them, maybe they need somebody to encourage them. Maybe they need some encouragement. I'll be honest with you, anytime you deal with public, you know, these poor people that, uh, you know, at stores not deal with public all the time. I, I'm going to tell you that uh, if you go to work in a good mood, it might, you, you probably will come home in a bad mood after dealing with some people you got to deal with. But, uh, but what, I'm, what I'm just trying to say here is that, you know, there, it does no good to complain. But anyhow, we're looking at the, now let's get back to where I, I wanted to go to talking about the farmer. Here we have a, uh, we have an illustration of the farmer, an encouraging example. Now, a farmer cannot be impatient. Um, a crop does not appear overnight. I mean, there's much to it. They, a, a, a poor farmer, uh, I mean, they, they have no control over the weather. Um, I mean, when they, when they plant and when they put thousands of dollars into getting the seed out, getting the, uh, the soil ready to plant, all the money it takes of the equipment they have and, and the fuel and repairs and the fertilizer, I mean, everything. And, and uh, you know, the, the weed killer and the seed itself and all, and all the time they put into it. A poor farmer, I mean, they don't, they put all these time and hours in it and they, they don't know if they're going to get anything in return. But uh, they have no control of the weather. Too much rain can, of course, cause the crop to rot. Too little rain can cause it to burn up, you know, dry up and die. Uh, too much sun can burn it up, and uh, early frost can kill it. Uh, in other words, a farmer has to be long-suffering with the weather. They have no control over it. All they can do is do what they know that it takes to grow the crop and then hopefully trust God to bless that crop. But all they can do is wait for that. And he, uh, They have to be very patient with the seed. It takes time for the seed to grow into a plant and uh, the Jewish farmers, of course, of course, they would, they would, they would pl plow and break up the ground. And what would be the us in, in the autumn, uh, uh, what we would call autumn months, would be uh, what the Jews would, the Jewish farmers would call the early rain. And the early rains they would uh, desire, so it would help. Uh, they didn't have big equipment back then. They didn't have tractors. They didn't have uh, big disc and all behind tractors or rototillers. I mean, they, you know, they had oxen. They they had hoes. I mean, they. They did it toiled with their their own hands. I mean, it was it was very hard work. It's still hard today, but it was very hard work. But they would, uh, of course, uh, 
look eagerly for the early rain to help soften the soil. And then the latter rain, of course, that would be around early spring. This would start to mature the harvest. And uh, this was a few months that they had to be patient. Once again, it wasn't just like it was a few weeks. It was a few months. So why were they so patient? Well, verse 7 it tells us that he knew that the fruit would be precious. Verse 7, Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth. They know what's coming. You know, when we read this too, when we talk about the husbandman, we think, of course, in the uh, book of John, chapter 15, where it talks about the vine and the branches and the husbandman there. Listen, there, there's been times every one of us has said, when we're going through a great trial or tribulation, we're going through stress. We have said to ourselves, Lord, come quickly. We have to understand that the husband and the Lord God, he, he has still has fruit that he's waiting to be produced. And until the last fruit has been produced, the Lord will not be sending his son to come back until that has happened. Now, once again, that last fruit could be produced today. The Lord could return today. But we have to understand when we say, and we say it most of the time, we say it selfishly, Lord, just come quickly. Lord, I just get this off, this burden off of me. We have to understand, listen, what is worse for us to endure this stress and in this trial and tribulation we're going through, or for a person, if Christ was to come back, for those that's heard the gospel, it would be too late for them to be saved. And then they would have to be cast into hell. Listen, I, I'm not saying our stress isn't real. And I'm not saying, and the Lord never says it's not easy. Our trials and tribulations are not easy. But if you know Jesus Christ as personal Savior, we have to understand there's still some folks out there that if they die without Christ, they're going to spend eternity in hell. And we need to, we need to realize that we need to be also be patient and allow the Lord to work in their lives and, 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 and work in our lives that we might be that one that he wants to use to carry the gospel, of the, the gospel seed to them, that he can produce a fruit through them by the conviction of the Holy Spirit. So we, we have to understand this, but when we talk, of course, about the the husbandman here. We, we he, the Bible says that he he was patient because he knew what was going to come, of the harvest that he would we would get. Galatians six nine says, "In due season we shall reap if we faint not." You know, folks. There's there's a there. I've heard stories of folks that has maybe had a loved one that they have prayed for for years. I'm talking for years. That maybe after 30, 40, 50 years of praying, that loved one finally come to know Jesus Christ as Savior. There's been some that has prayed that's left this world and gone home to be with the Lord. And after they have left, then a person that they have prayed for for year after year after year, that person comes to know Jesus Christ as personal Savior. Listen, we have to understand we cannot, we cannot become faint during this time as we wait. The Bible said, Bible, I just read in, in Galatians in, in 6, 9, in due season we shall reap if we faint not. We have, to, we have to continue to endure to the end. James looks at the Christian as a spiritual farmer, looking at the spiritual, of course, harvest. <clears throat> Look at verse 8, the first part. He says, be ye also patient, establish your hearts. Our hearts, of course, is the soil. We we see, of course, the in the in Luke eight, we see in the parable of the sower. We see that the seed is is the gospel. The seed is the word of God, and our soil is the heart. And just like there's seasons for the soil, there's also seasons for the Christian life. <coughs> Excuse me. Sometimes. Sometimes our hearts become cold and hard and we don't notice it. And there's times that the Lord, he might have to, um, he might have to, to bring, and I'm not saying this is always, but sometimes a, a Christian's heart is cold, it's become hardened, 
And sometimes the Lord might have to let a, a trial or a testing or hardship come in order to break up that soil again. God has to, he has to plow the soil up. Jeremiah 4.3 says, break up your fallow ground. In other words, the Lord cannot plant the seed until the heart's ready. If the soil's not ready, there's no need to put the seed in there. And sometimes there's something that God, he wants to teach us, he wants to train us in, the seed being the word of God. There's a truth that the Lord wants to reveal to us. He wants us to obey it. He wants us to get to this point of walking with him and walking in the spirit, not the flesh. And it could be sometimes our heart's not ready. And therefore, he has to allow a hardship to come in order to break our, our hard soil of our heart up to get it soft again so he can plant that seed. Now, we might sit back and say, well, I, you know, if he would just plant a seed, I'm willing to accept it. That is not always true. You and I, we're not always so open to the word of God and to the teachings of our Savior and to be obedient. We're not always that freely open to it. And sometimes the Lord's got to, he's got to break up our, our, our cold, uh, hard heart that's become very hard. He's got to break it up. And then, of course, he breaks it up, and then he sends the sunshine and the, and, the, and the rain to nurture the seed. And this is why we see again in the verse where the Lord says it rains on the just and the unjust. The sun shines on the just and the unjust. I mean, both saved and both, both those saved and unsaved. Listen, they go through trials and testings, hardships, and then both go, both go through days that they have good days, maybe good weeks. But both go through trials and testings and hardships, each one. And then after in the heart of the Christian, it then are of the sinner, if God plants the seed of the gospel in someone, that seed, of course, it's the sunshine and the rain. It starts to nurture, and then it becomes a plant, and then it produces a harvest. So now, listen, once again, this is not, there's a lot of work to this. Many times when God tries to speak to a heart of a person, even a saved or unsaved person, they don't always, they're not always acceptable of listening right then at that very moment. Sometimes it takes a lot of time for God to get through some of these cold, dark hearts. He, he's trying to break through. Some of these folks that are unsaved, their hearts are very, they're, they're, they're cold, they're dark, um, and God, the, you know, he's, he, he's trying to break through that heart. And as soon as he breaks through, he can, he can, and breaks that fallow ground. He then plants that, the seed of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. But then he still has to send some sunshine. He's got to send some rain. He's got uh, uh, to, to both the, to the believer and the unbeliever, but we're talking about the sinner right now. And that sinner, of course, the things that, some of the things that they have to go through, some of the trials and testings and hardships that they have to face, it's so that the seed can mature. And then once it's mature, it brings a harvest. So you and I, we got to be careful of how we judge how the Lord, as the husbandman, our Lord God being the husband, we need to be very careful how we judge or tell him to do his job as a farmer. As the husbandman, of course, of the field, of course, of the vine. And we are the branches and Christ is the vine. Sometimes we think we know what is best and what we think is best is not best at all. This is why we have to endure and be patient. God wants his fruit of the spirit to grow that, that he can receive a harvest from it. And this, of course, we see, I'm not going to turn there, but in Galatians 5, and 23, of course, we see the fruit of the spirit. That is the nine graces of the fruit of the Spirit. And the only way that this can be done is through the uh, trials and testings and tribulations. When we when we look at, at Galatians, when we look at the, the nine graces of the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5, 22 and 23, listen now, there's no way to get there of those nine graces without trials and tribulations. It can't be done. Listen, I have to be honest with myself. Many times when things are going good, I start to see myself kind of getting away from some of those nine, one of those nine graces of the fruit of the Spirit. I, listen, I, only according to the Word of God, I believe this, really. 
I truly believe that what is what our nation is going through right now and around the world, the, actually with this uh, uh, coronavirus, I really believe the peop- the Christians in America needed they needed to do, to be awakened. I just wrote a blog this past week on you know the, the spiritual sleep. And I really believe Christians need to be awake. And I'm going to tell you right now, and I will raise my hand, I'm one that needed that. So sometimes we get so comfortable and we get so confident in how, how things are going that we start to get away from the Lord and the things of God and we don't even recognize it or notice it. Listen, sometimes it's not so much that we even, it's not that we have even more sin or sin in our life, but we, our dependency upon God starts to slip. We start depending on ourselves more than we ought to when we, we lose our dependency upon God. Let me tell you something. Please listen. I'm not, and I'm not trying to be scary or scare no one. <clears throat> you look at this virus. You look how quickly our nation plummeted. I mean, I mean quick. As well as our economy was doing, our nation was doing, you look how fast it plummeted. And if God does not intervene soon, our nation, and once again, I, I'm not trying to be a naysayer or scare anybody. If this goes on month after month after month, I, listen, our nation can't take this. The economy cannot take it. We've got to get, we've got to get folks back in, into working where they can work again and, and, and provide for themselves. And let me tell you something, if, if God does not intervene, our nation could end up being one of the poorest nations in the world. And there's some right now out there today, I'm not saying you listening, but in our, in our nation today, there are many out there today that they'd say that'll never happen. Let me tell you something, it can happen. You see how quick God got our attention? You see how quick it brought us to realize that if God doesn't intervene, and listen, this is why you and I as Christians, we need to be praying and calling upon God to, to, to heal our nation right now. I, I'm serious. We need, to be, we need to be calling upon the name of the Lord to heal our nation we, and ask the Lord to forgive us of, 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 of the, the sin we've just let go free and, and, and loose and, and our lack of dependency and trust in Him and, and turning away from Him. We as the believers, we need to turn to God for the sake of our own nation. And this is something that needs to be done soon. Because if God don't intervene, let me tell you something. It could devastate our nation. It is only through God that our nation has been blessed like it is. And listen, I I appreciate what the president and vice president and and those are trying to do and I appreciate all they're trying to do and to lead our nation the right way, but I just keep praying and praying and I appreciate our, our, our president. I do. I, I don't know his, I do not know his spiritual life. I don't know. I hope he's saved. And if he is saved, I hope he'll keep growing in the Lord. And if he's not saved, I pray for his salvation, but I pray he'll continue to, to at least turn uh, the Bible says the, the heart of the king is in the hands of God, that God will at least continue to, to use our president to turn our nation back to God. And so I pray for our governor. And I'm going to ask you to pray for Governor Northam. I do pray for him, pray for his salvation. You say, Pastor, you don't know that he's saved. I, I don't, but I know just by listening to what he says, he it carries no, shows no sign of being saved. But we need to pray for his salvation. You know, I, 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 I used, to, instead of praying this way, it's easy to pray for the Lord to remove him. I mean, I'm, I'm very, and once again, I'm not making this political. I'm, we're, I'm still, we're still talking about trials and testings in our nation and our state of Virginia. I'm very brokenhearted how he looks at the, at the life of a baby, an infant. You know, uh, inside the womb of a mother, he thinks it's okay to murder that baby I mean, until that baby, even in its ninth month, he thinks it's okay to murder that baby. It's murder. It's wrong. It's sinful. It's ungodly. And God is not pleased with that. My first initial thing is pray, God, please remove him and give us a godly governor. But you know what would even be greater? 
is for that man to be saved and turn to God and the whole state of Virginia in our nation see him turn from the ways he is leading and start leading us in the ways of God. And I say that with sincerity. Pray for his salvation. I, I do. I, many of them up there in Virginia and, of course, in D.C., we need to pray for their salvation. But back to where I'm at, we, if, 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 if God doesn't intervene, I mean, we're, I mean, we're, we're going to be in a world of trouble. And, you know, we also, one thing we can, we can learn through the scriptures here is we can find joy in the harvest. And, it, and the way we can do that is found in verse 8. He says, establish your hearts. Establish your hearts. Establish means to be established, to set fast, to turn resolutely in a certain direction, set, strengthen. So the Lord tells us, he said, listen, during these times, let's be patient and let's, let's, uh, let's endure and let's establish your heart. In other words, first of all, you know, turn, set fast in the, the will, ways, and word of God. Set, set your feet on that solid rock of Jesus Christ. Stand firm. And as we are standing firm, as we set fast, then let's turn to a certain direction, which, which of course is toward the Lord God. And then let's look to him to strengthen us. So let's look for him through these uh, trials and testings and through these hardships. Let's, let's look for the Lord to establish us, to establish us, to set our, our feet on a solid rock. Over in, um, and, and you don't have to, I'm just going to turn there real quickly. If you want to, you can. Romans 1.11. It says, for I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end ye may be established. There we see that word established again. One of the purposes of the spiritual ministry of the local church is to establish the heart. Once again, listen, for us to assemble together as born again believers here at Calvary Baptist Church and for each true assembly of born again believers, there's, there's more to it than Hebrews 10, 24, and 25 when it comes to the assembling of ourselves together. One other reason, we're to provoke one another into love and good works. That alone really is enough that we should want to assemble together. But also to help establish one another. God said, wants to use us to establish one another's heart, to encourage each other to stand. Listen, there, there's times I get a little down and discouraged or something that the Lord, he'll, he will speak to one of y'all's hearts. You'll give me a call. You'll send a text of encouragement. And man, it peps me right up. Listen, there's something to be said, man. It's, it's a blessing to have your brothers and sisters in Christ, man, to stand with you, to, to encourage you. And he says here to establish your hearts. And I'm not going to turn there, but in 1 Thessalonians 3, verses 1 through 3, Paul sent Timothy to, to Thessalonica to establish the young Christians in their faith. And this is very important to do so. And Paul also prays their hearts would be established in verse 10 through 13 of that same uh, 1 Thessalonians 3. So to establish one's heart, this, this is very important. This is not to be taken lightly at all. And the word of God in prayer is the most important part to establish a heart. The word of God. That is the two most important things to, to establish one's heart. To encourage one. Sometimes, um, and, and you know, you folks know me. I mean, I, I share with you personally things that, that, that I go through. Here lately, I, I, I seriously, I, I have not fretted through this. I have not worried about that. I really haven't. I'm just turning to the Lord. I'm, I'm just waiting for the Lord to, I want to learn all I can learn. I'm, I, I'm asking, I'm praying for souls to be saved because I know that's God's will. I pray and Christians will be drawn closer to him through it because I know that's God's will. And I can't wait till we can gather together once again and assemble together as brothers and sisters in Christ to be here to, to man, to hear all of us sing again, uh, to pray together, to, to hug one another, to shake hands, to establish each other, to praise and worship God together as one assembly. I mean, I, I just cannot, I cannot wait till that, you know, that happens again. And, and, but I do want to say this, though, that the word of God in prayer, these, these two are the most important parts. And I see through this, since this has started happening, once again, not that I'm worried about this, 
But I've just have I've just had a heavy heart about many things. I, I've had a heavier heart about souls. My heart's been very heavy for for you people that are members of Calvary Baptist Church. My heart because I miss you so much, and my heart is heavy because we cannot assemble together. And so, when when we talk about being established here, we have to understand that the Word of God in prayer. Uh, for some reason, I just I've just and I have found myself some days that, you know how some days you, you just feel heavy hearted, but you, you can't pinpoint why, um, you know, it's not like you maybe you have going through a personal trial or testing at the time. You just, I've had many of those days here lately and, and I, and, and I believe it's just the Lord working in my heart, but I've noticed that every time it happens, I immediately, I, I don't care if I, I mean, I don't care what needs to be done. I go to the Lord. I, I have to get alone with God. I got to get in his word and I've got to spend some time in prayer with him. And as soon as I do, man, he just encouraged me and he, he established me. He established my goings. He lifts me up. He encourages me and he'll do the same for you. The word of God and prayer is so important. And keep in mind when we talk about the farmer, the, the farmer, he doesn't stand around doing nothing. He He's, he's constantly at work as he looks towards that harvest. You know, there's times that you and I, and during this time, there's still much we can do for the Lord. There's a lot we cannot do now. We used to. Assembling together. All our ministries, you know, our master club, you know, our soul winning. All I mean, we can still be out witnessing, though. Uh, <coughs> can't do it as a group, but we go out witnessing. There's still much to do. But once again, let me encourage you. And I, I'm going to stop here. We didn't even get, I haven't even finished with the farmer yet, but, and then to get to the prophets as an example that the Lord gives us. And then Job is an example. If the Lord allows me or wants me to, I'll continue this another time. But, but uh, let me just say this in, in closing. Um, you know, as we uh, gather together uh, or, or, or miss the assembling of ourselves together, um, you know, there's still a lot we can do, but this is, this is why I want to encourage you to do at this time is sp spend more time with the Lord through this. Spend more time in, in reading and studying God's word and more time in prayer. Get alone with God more. The, listen, I, I, I know this is what the Lord's trying to do with a believer and Christian is get our attention more and, and try to, he says, draw, draw nigh to God. He will draw nigh to us. And I know I've been saying it and then mentioning it in my blogs and, and I can't emphasize it enough is use this time to get alone more with God, not to try. Listen, I know that many, maybe it's not working. Maybe, you, you know, you're using this as time to catch up on some things and there's nothing wrong with that. And it really isn't. But don't leave the Lord out. It's better... If you, if you, through the day, you've got, you know, two, three, four, five things you're trying to, to get done through the day and you've got a list, it's better to leave two or three of them undone and spend time with God than to get all that done and not be with the Lord. I encourage you, spend time with the Lord God through this. And we need to go to the Lord God on behalf of our nation. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and turn from their wicked ways. Listen, God says he will heal our land. On behalf of our nation, we need to go to God on behalf of our nation. We really do. And I'm encouraging you to do this. Let's close in prayer, please. Father, as we come to you, we thank you once again for your word. We thank you for the opportunity, Lord, that you have used this evening to speak to our hearts. I pray once again that you would, uh, Lord, I pray you would establish our hearts. I pray that you would encourage us. And Lord, I pray you would draw us closer to thee. Oh, Father, I do pray on behalf of our nation. Oh, God, I do pray, Lord, that you would heal us, Lord. Father, I know, first of all, our greatest healing, dear God, is a spiritual healing. Oh, Lord, please forgive us for the ungodliness and wickedness of our nation. And Lord, I, I don't want to just point out one or two things because there's so many. But God, please forgive us. Forgive us, our nation, United States of America, for all the ungodliness and wickedness, Lord, that 
we've allowed to continue to occur, and Lord, day after day. But Father, I ask, please, Lord, would you have mercy upon us? Oh, God, would you please, Lord, just bless us with your grace. Have mercy upon us, Lord. Re remove this virus from us. And Father, I pray that it will accomplish all that you want it to accomplish, dear God. And uh, Lord, that uh, it will accomplish and bear all the fruit that you want it to bear. And I ask you, Father, for the sake of our nation, dear God, would you, would you please bless us and remove this virus soon that, Father, our nation can get up, uh, up and going again. And, and, Lord, our economy can start growing again. Folks can get back to work, Lord. And, but, God, once again, right now, Lord, I understand that, Lord, our spiritual condition, Lord, is, is more important than our, our physical condition and financial condition. But, God, I do pray, have mercy upon us. Forgive us. Lord, save souls through this. Draw Christians closer to thee. And we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. God bless you.